John Tuser reporting. At home, the Liberal Party is hoping John Howard will lead them into a new era. Tough, but above all, conservative, as he made plain to me in his Canberra office just hours after his election. Uh, I certainly have what you call conservative views on foreign affairs. I'm a very strong supporter of the American alliance, but uh, you know, let's face it, that's uh, the Liberal Party's tradition. Um, and uh, I, in foreign affairs, one thing I would like to develop a lot more is uh, a focus on Australia's relations with Indonesia. I believe that it's been one of the more than neglected areas of foreign affairs in recent times. Uh, I think it's a pity that Mr Hayden, for example, doesn't spend more time uh, worrying about Australia's relations with Indonesia uh, and perhaps a little less preoccupation with the admittedly very tragic affairs in, in Africa. Um, you think that there's not much enough effort being given to getting on with Indonesia? That's my concern. I, I was there recently and I spoke to everybody from President Tejado down and uh, there's a great desire on the part of the Indonesians to have a better relationship but obviously they have, they have to make concessions and I think they have this you know, continually quite absurd attitude uh, about foreign journalists. But uh, generally speaking, I think the preoccupation of the left of Australian politics with the events in East Timor has needlessly soured our relations with Indonesia. It's just very much to our benefit and long-term interest that we have a better relationship. But the right of Labor politics, which happens to govern this country at the moment, uh, some people would say bends over backwards to accommodate Indonesia. How could you bend over further? I don't think they bend over backwards. I think what they have really done is essentially left it in the pigeonhole because it's an internal embarrassment to them. West Irian, do you see that as a, uh, a problem area for this country and Indonesia in the future? It could. Once again, if we had a better relationship with Indonesia, uh, difficulties might be uh, anticipated, preempted, nipped in the bud. You don't see uh, any threat of future Indonesian expansionism there? Well, I don't at the moment. And but it could happen? Well, in theory, anything like that could happen, but let's understand the enormous diversion of resources that would be required on Indonesia's part. To my understanding of the size of the Indonesian military and the deployment of weapons and so forth uh, doesn't perhaps uh, lend support to the idea they're about to be expansionist. Um, turning mm. to South Africa, which of course yes. is wracked by civil strife at the moment and things look like they're getting worse, mm. um, I think you think that the present government's gone too far on South Africa, but do you absolutely condemn apartheid? Yes, I do. I find it quite objectionable. Um, I uh, find nothing in uh, the principles of the Liberal Party that would give any comfort to the philosophic basis of the regime in South Africa. No, well, nothing at all. Well, where would uh, the Liberal Party differ from Labor? Uh, on sanctions? Yes, the imposition of economic sanctions and the unwillingness of the Labor Party to make any concessions at all uh, to the attempts admittedly uh, inadequate uh, towards reform in South Africa. Uh, the reality of that regime is that if no encouragement at all or let me put it another way, if more encouragement in the past had been given, perhaps there would have been developed a slightly more positive attitude. But you're not saying it's the rest of the world's fault? Um... No, I'm not, not, I'm not saying that for a moment. Uh, and and uh, I, I find apartheid totally objectionable. The view, though, I have consistently put, which some people have difficulty with, uh, is that, yes, it's dreadful, and there are many other countries with equally dreadful governments or even worse governments and the fact that in a formal sense uh, uh, the uh, regime or the apartheid is is enshrined into the constitution it's the reality of what happens and let's face it there is as much racial discrimination in many other countries in South Africa now they're all wrong that's the point I'm simply making and it's a question of proportion what do you think about um French actions in our area of the world, particularly their nuclear policy, which uh, has led in July to some fairly violently covert actions in Northland Harbour. Well, uh, that's, uh, that, that whole issue is, a, is an extraordinary saga, and uh, um, I, I don't know that I want to get into any detailed comment on it. Uh, the attitude that has been taken about nuclear testing in the past by liberal governments, I certainly agree with, and... Uh, and that is? Uh, the the uh, the the little attitude yes, to Mororoa. Yes, and and so forth. I think that's basically correct. But I I don't really um, uh, I don't know that I want to make a detailed comment on the Auckland Harbour uh, issue. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, do you think that the French are uh, 
riding roughshod over the South Pacific area, if you like. I mean, that they're acting I think, I think arrogantly in the pursuit of their force to front. Well, um, uh, I don't want to make a provocative statement about what they're doing. I do, I do believe that uh, there's a certain, you know, there's a certainly the appearance of insensitivity, and I can, I can understand some of the concerns that have been expressed. Should they stop testing? Well, that's a difficult, uh, that's a difficult issue. I, I'm not as, uh, I certainly don't go as far as the, uh, as the government does on that. Well, where do you stop? Well, I think, I think, I think the idea of, uh, of a total. Uh, I mean, I, we're certainly against uh, all the proposals relating to um, the unreality of the nuclear-free zone. Mr Howard's election is clearly a signal to the electorate that the Liberal Party has made a right turn. The wets face desiccation. For the dries, their time has come. Dateline's political commentator Mungo McCallum has been following the action, and he's speaking with Dennis Grant from our Canberra studio. Mungo, there's a long tradition of Liberal leaders getting to that position by knifing their uh, former leaders in the back. That didn't happen on this occasion, though. Well, it didn't have to happen because Andrew Peacock was quite prepared to knife himself in the front. Uh, Andrew Peacock's style of leadership has always been considered to be a bit wishy-washy. And when he saw the Howard Challenge coming, for a very long time he did nothing about it at all. Uh, when he eventually did something, it was a total overreaction, it was quite unnecessary. But even then, he didn't follow it through. He didn't tell anybody what he was doing. He didn't say that he regarded the question of John Howard as deputy as a resignation issue. And uh, he didn't certainly didn't say that if people voted for John Howard, he would regard it as a vote of absolute no confidence in himself. That, of course, is the way it transpired. And I think a lot of Liberals, even as late as about 12 o'clock yesterday, were still wondering how on earth they were going to get out of all this. Uh, they were trying to preserve the status quo. They liked the idea of an Andrew Peacock, John Howard team. And they certainly didn't want to lose either man. Um, this morning, they're congratulating on themselves on getting out of it as quite as cleanly and quickly as they did. Mungo, was it ignorance or arrogance that Mr Peacock didn't get on the phone to drum up some support? I think it was a combination of both, but you've got to remember that Andrew Peacock's political career has been a succession of things being handed to him on a silver platter. Uh, he inherited the safe seat from Sir Robert Menzies. He was always thought of as a, a future Liberal leader. He never really had to work terribly hard for any of the positions he got himself into. And when he did finally face a situation where the only way to get out was some... Uh, really good, hard, old-fashioned campaigning. I think he'd really forgotten how to do it. Howard's good in the Parliament, but is he good enough for Keating and Hawke? This is the question that everyone's going to ask, but uh, Howard at least does provide a real alternative. Uh, Andrew Peacock was very much a man of the centre, although he was being pushed rather reluctantly to the right by some of his colleagues. Uh, John Howard has never made any secret of the fact that he is a radical right-winger. Now, this does mean that it's not going to be a question of whether you vote for the person who looks best on television. It is going to be a question of whether you vote for the people whose policies so far, economically at least, seem to be working fairly well, or whether you're going to take a plunge into the unknown with John Howard. Uh, that's the question which is going to have to be resolved over the next two years. And it's a very different kind of Liberal Party from the Liberal Party we've got all grown up with. Mungo McCallum, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much.